Business income 2022-2023. Business income or loss and other gains or losses. Tax software examples. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040, populating it with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to it, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related schedules and forms at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point as normal, single filer, Mr. Anderson, no dependents, 100,000 W-2 income. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We've got the 12,950 standard deduction bringing us to the 87,050. If I check that out in our formula over here, 100,000, 12,950, 87,050. The tax is being calculated depending on the software and we are dependent on the software to calculate the tax is what I mean, 14,774. We're saying there's 15,000 of uh, withholdings to get us down to the overpayment of 226 mirrored over here as well. Now I just want, we're gonna do a quick look then at what would happen if our income was coming from a Schedule C type of business. So right here, we've got our income obviously on the W-2 side of things. What if it was business income? Now, as we look at this, we wanna just get an idea of the added complexity involved with a business income. And remember, if you're doing tax return preparation, then you might be thinking, where do I wanna specialize? Do I want to be picking up a lot of businesses or do maybe I wanna be doing non-business uh, tax returns and not take on a lot of the odd added complexities that might come with business type of tax returns? Where do we want to be specializing within? So our main focus here is on the income side of things. So if I open up the, the schedule one, we could see that we're gonna have these other income items and we're looking here at the business income coming from the Schedule C. This will feed into page one as we've seen before with the Schedule one that will be feeding into this page one. But as we do that, we're also gonna see a lot of other uh, items that are impacted when we add the uh, Schedule C income. So let's just add a simple Schedule C and look at some of those changes that will take place. So I'm going to go to income. I'm going to say it's a Schedule C business. This is where we would add a whole nother income statement. I'm not going to add anything except some uh, income line and an expense line. So let's say there was 30,000 of income. And then we had advertising expense of 10,000 to bring us down to 20,000, basically net of this little income statement. So if I say, okay, what would happen if I pull that on over to the form 1040? And we say, okay, now I've got a Schedule C. So I haven't populated it in, in terms of all the stuff up top. We'll talk more about that later. But the general idea is that we've got an income statement down below, income 30,000 minus the expense of 10,000. That's gonna give us a net income in essence of the 20,000. And that's what's gonna pull into the schedule one. So now in the schedule one, we've got the 20,000 and there it is. And that 20,000 is then gonna pull into the form 1040 where we have the 100,000 and then the schedule one stuff of the 20,000 to get us to 120,000. So not too complex, we would expect, that's kind of what we would expect to see at that point. But if I go back to the schedule C, remember that really what pulled over wasn't actually just the income line. If I look at my income tax equation, we kind of think about income, you know, everything that's income up top and then the equivalent of expenses down below being deductions to get to the equivalent of taxable income or net income, which is taxable income. But here we have all these expenses that are really being uh, recorded, which are deductions on the Schedule C. So these are business deductions that are being recorded and what's being pulled into our tax formula isn't really 
income, gross income, it's the net income that's coming from our Schedule C. Now, obviously, in order to populate the Schedule C, we need an, basically an income statement. So that means we need some level of bookkeeping. So if you do taxes, then the question is, uh, are you specializing in, do you, are you gonna help out with bookkeeping or adjusting kind of entries if you're gonna be helping out uh, and populating the Schedule C, which oftentimes small businesses could use some help in that department. Also, if they give you an income statement, then this isn't exactly using the double entry accounting system because there's no balance sheet. So in order to get a better grasp on this, it would be better to have the businesses using something like a QuickBooks that uses a double entry accounting system and populates a balance sheet and whatnot so that you can have more assurance on, on this income statement that's being used to populate the Schedule C. So those are just a couple added complexities with regards to uh, the Schedule C income. Also note that if you had Schedule C income and uh, no business income, no W-2 income, then you'd also have to be thinking about how they're gonna pay their taxes as the year goes, meaning uh, they, would have, they would have had to pay in 2022, not by April 15th or 18th of 2023 to avoid penalties and interest. So you have that added level of complexity to deal with. And then you also have the self-employment tax. So we'll go into this in more detail later, but just to see the added kind of complexity, if I go into the self-employment tax, this is the equivalent of like payroll taxes that come out of your W-2. However, there are an employee and employer portion. When you work as an employee, you only pay through the W-2. The employee portion, the employer pays like the equivalent in terms of Social Security and Medicare. So the IRS kind of sees you as a sole proprietor, as the employee and employer of yourself with regards to Social Security and Medicare. So they basically charge you the employee and employer portion of Social Security and Medicare taxes on, on your net income, in essence. So we'll get into this in more detail later, but <coughs> the general idea, Sorry about that, I almost choked to death there, but that's okay, I'm back. The general idea is that you've got your tax calculation down here, which is gonna be pulled into page two. Now this is more complicated, obviously, because usually we don't have to deal with like payroll taxes, social security and Medicare with a W-2 type of client, because although it's reported on the W-2, it usually has already been taken care of by the employer and it's just a reporting form and, and we're dealing with the income tax, not these other taxes. But here, we'd have to deal with that. So if I go back to the form 1040 and I go to page two, you'll notice that we have the tax calculated calculation, but we also have these other taxes of that 2826. Not only that, but if I go back to that, that form, we also gonna take half of that amount and, and that's gonna be a deductible portion. Why is it deductible? Because whenever they deal with the Schedule C, they're trying to kind of use this schedule to mirror what happens in payroll taxes. And if you had an employee-employer situation, the employer would have to pay their portion of the payroll taxes, but they would also get to deduct that portion. So you would think that this amount that I have to pay in payroll taxes, I would get to deduct it, which you would think would happen on the Schedule C. But I can't deduct it on the Schedule C because the net income of the Schedule C is the thing I use to calculate the payroll taxes and that would end up in a circular reference. Therefore, we have to deduct that as an above the line deduction over here on the Schedule 1. So now we've got the Schedule 1 deduction for the half of it that's included uh, in here. And then I had the self-employed health insurance. That's another kind of complication, but I'm not gonna include that now. Then this is going to be included down here and that pulls into page one. So now if I go through this, I still got the 100,000 W-2 income, 20,000 of the net income pulled in from the Schedule C. That makes sense for the total income of 120,000. But then I've got this messy above the line deduction of half of the self-employment tax of 1,413 to get me to the adjusted gross income here. And then we also have this qualified business income deduction, which is a relatively uh, new deduction, which again is coming from this situation where they're trying to mirror what they did with some of the pass-through entities like a Schedule uh, S corporation 
and an LLC in the format of a, of a sole proprietorship. And they just kind of clumped this, this qualified business income deduction in place here. So I, we might talk that, about that calculation a little bit more later. It has some kind of wonky, weird components to it, but obviously it's a significant amount. And so then, and that finally gets us down to the taxable income. So if I was to mirror that and just try to say, okay, what happened here? What happened here? I would say, okay, well, the income, if I go to the income line, I can recalculate the income statement, which you might not do in your little worksheet over here because you might have another worksheet that basically is the income statement. And we'll talk maybe more about that later. But if I say this was, what did I say it was? 30, I said it was, how much did I say it was? I don't know, 20, let's say 30,000 minus 10,000, that's 300. Minus 10,000 gets us to the 20,000. That's gonna pull over here. So now we're at 120,000. And then we've got the uh, adjustments to income, which is gonna be the tax. So it's self-employment tax. We could recalculate it, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna rely on the software to calculate the tax, which is going to be the uh, 2826. Let's actually do the tax first. That's gonna be other taxes, self-employment. Employment. Tax 2826. And then the above the line deduction is gonna be equal to that 2826 time uh, divided by two and so that pulls into page one i could recreate this and say okay there's the 120 minus half the self-employment tax is 118 587 does that make sense does that make sense i don't know one so 118 587 all right and then we've got the standard deduction boom and then you've got this qualified business income now we could have another worksheet to calculate that, to kind of double check that. But I'm just gonna rely on the software right now and say, okay, the software is coming up with uh, 3717. So I'm gonna say, all right, so 3717. So we might dive into that later when we get into the Schedule C, but the bottom line is here at this point, 101920. Uh, so now we're at the 101920. And then if I go to page two, I'll rely on the tax software to calculate the income tax, 18296. So this is gonna be 18296. And then the, the other credits, we don't have any, but we got the other tax, which is the self-employment tax, which brings our total tax 18 plus the 2826 to 21122. We withheld 15,000. So therefore the uh, amount due is 6,000. The software calculated a penalty of 161. So I'll say 161 on the penalty it gets us the two, the 6283. So 6283. Okay, that's just a quick recap of all the things that are kind of impacted. So the, our main focus right here is just on that, that amount that's being pulled in from the Schedule C because we're focused on line one and the income line but obviously all these things become interrelated and part of the difficulty on the tax code isn't that any one thing is difficult, but it's when you compile all these things together and they have interrelated uh, reactions such as AGI limitations and so on and so forth that, that it starts to be complex just because of those interrelationships. And again, the Schedule C, although you can have a fairly basic Schedule C, it still could add a significant level of, of complexity to the tax return. As you can see, it can have an impact on many different kind of areas. Now, if you sold uh, business equipment, then that's when you might have that form 4797. So I, I don't think I'm gonna dive into that right now, but other than to say, uh, other than to say, here is the form, sale of business property, and when you're, when you're looking at a business, this kind of comes down to the bookkeeping situation again, because when they make large purchases, capital investments, then you typically have to put them on the books as an asset. That means you have to also deal with depreciation schedules. And when they sell assets, then now you've got a situation where you've got a sale of business asset we've got to kind of figure out the gain or loss on the sale of the business asset. One other thing that to just touch on, which we'll talk more about later, we said that we could have a gain or loss 
So remember that this, like what if I started a business and it lost money? Uh, if I went back on over and I said, okay, what if my schedule C business here lost money, lost money? I'm gonna say, okay, let's say the expenses were actually uh, 40,000, so we lost $10,000. So if I go back on over schedule C, income minus expenses, well, expenses are greater than the income, I have a loss. Can you do that? Uh, first of all, are losses good or bad? In reality, they're bad. We did, our business lost money, although that often happens for startup businesses. And, and if the investment results in revenue in the future, that could be good, but many businesses end up losses and businesses go under and that happens. But for taxes, it could be good because we might be able to pull the loss over. And if we had W-2 income, for example, we maybe can take the, the loss against the income, bringing our W-2 income down by the loss now to the 90,000 from the 100,000. Now, the IRS is gonna be quite skeptical as you could expect with people claiming losses on the Schedule C. So, if, so you've got to make sure that you actually have a valid and justifiable loss. You're not talking about a hobby that you have that you, <laughs> you're writing off as a loss as a, as a business or something like that. Uh, and, and that it's an actual calculation of the loss. Uh, so we'll dive into that possibly when we get into the Schedule C area. But just note that that, you know, could that could happen quite possible that you have a business started a business, the business had a loss and you could have a tax you know, benefit or uh, from a, a loss but again the iris you can imagine is going to be more skeptical you would think if you were an auditor and someone's writing off losses you're going to go i don't know about you know you might you know dive into that in a bit more detail so like i say we'll talk more about schedule c stuff in a future section